The man bought an antique cabinet but found a mechanism when cleaning. He was curious and reached in. He opened the cabinet and found a pen and ink and many letters inside. All of them belonged to a woman from a hundred years ago. Elizabeth is 29 years old and her father is committed to marrying her off. But Elizabeth doesn't like the man. She tried to plead with her father but he refused. These letters are Elizabeth's words to the man she imagined in her mind. But I ache for a love that burns like fire. Scott reads these letters over 100 years later. He sympathized with Elizabeth's plight, so he immediately sent a reply on his computer. He suggested that Elizabeth listen to her heart's choice, but the letter couldn't be sent after all. Scott later talked to his mother about the letters. His mother was interested in time travel. Soon after, she brings Scott a stamp from 1863 and a bottle of antique ink. She told him about a post office from 1957. This post office was built before the Civil War and still exists today. Late at night Scott couldn't sleep thinking about Elizabeth's letter. Finally he got up from bed and wrote a letter in antique ink. He just read the letter in the secret compartment of the desk. Dreams may be out there in the mist right now, just a heartbeat away. Who knows? Perhaps I'm the one you seek. Drove to the post office, but since the post office hadn't been used for years, the building was deserted. Scott threw the envelope into the mailbox. However, the letter actually traveled back in time and was sent to 1863. Elizabeth opened the letter. The look on her face changed from bewilderment to shock. She opened the cabinet but found that the letters in the secret compartment were gone. So she wrote another letter and put it in the secret compartment. At the same time, Scott heard a noise in the cabinet and opened a letter that had just arrived. It's a question from Elizabeth. Elizabeth couldn't understand that she was having a crazy dream or being invaded with privacy by him again. Scott was shocked. He didn't think a miracle would happen. So, he quickly wrote a letter introducing himself and explaining the reason for the letter and sent it off. From then on, they began to exchange letters and share their lives. Scott told her about the prosperity in a hundred years. Elizabeth, in turn, would share her poems with him. Scott became more and more curious about her. He found out Elizabeth's address and drove there. It's a meeting that spans a hundred years. The man 100 years later looks ahead. The woman of 100 years ago seems to sense something and looks up. They both reach forward to feel each other's warmth and each other's scent. Then they even shed tears. Scott came to Elizabeth's home a hundred years later. With the passage of a hundred years, Elizabeth had passed away. Even Elizabeth's sister's granddaughter was already gray-haired. But Scott felt her presence when he was walking down the stairs. He went back and wrote about it in a letter. He said that Elizabeth had almost touched his chest. He also felt Elizabeth's presence. To his surprise, Elizabeth felt the same thing. The two of them were connected by an invisible string. Elizabeth took a picture and sent it to Scott. Scott received the photo and did the same thing. He read Elizabeth's poem and was so impressed that he wrote to encourage her to continue writing poetry. But the letter slips off the table and Elizabeth doesn't receive it. Elizabeth was tired of not receiving the letter for a long time and was tired of her parents pushing her to get married. So she decides to go to Scott City for a break. She tells her sister everything. She asks her sister to send Scott's letter to her at home and put it back in her locker for her. At the time of her departure, Scott was competing in a cycling competition, but his race suddenly had an accident that caused him to fall to the ground. And then... Although they were in different times and places, they were experiencing the same pain. Scott falls into a coma and loses contact with Elizabeth. Elizabeth runs into a man in another city. She only takes one look at him and falls into a deep obsession. The man immediately looks up at her. Later he offers to walk with Elizabeth for a while. Just because he thought he must have met Elizabeth before. He was a colonel. He and Elizabeth had a wonderful time together. Elizabeth feels a stronger connection to Scott when she's with the colonel. But soon the colonel was going back to the war. He asks Elizabeth to meet him in private. The two of them can hide their love as they say goodbye. Just as they kiss, a Commodore Scott suddenly wakes up. When Scott is released from the hospital, he goes through the letters in his locker. He sees that Elizabeth has found the love of her life and is genuinely happy for her. When Scott sees that the colonel has gone to war, he goes to find out how the war ended. However, he finds out that the colonel's regiment was almost completely wiped out and the colonel was on the death list. Scott immediately writes a letter and rushes into the post office. But he found out that the post office was on fire. This man was crazy for sending a letter. He rushes straight into the burning post office. 
He dodged the flames to find the mailbox and put the letter in. By the time he left, the stairwell was already ablaze. Scott was so desperate to stop the colonel before he fought. But it was too late. Elizabeth had already sent the colonel away. It took her several days to receive Scott's envelope. Her expression immediately changed, as she even drove the carriage to the station herself. When she bought her ticket, the conductor said the train line to the front had been cut off and advised her not to go. But Elizabeth didn't flinch. She bought a ticket to the nearest town to the battlefield. Then she hired a car to go to the front. When she arrived at the front, she saw many grim scenes. She asked a soldier about the colonel's regiment. The soldier told her that the war was terrible, and then he showed her a place where the wounded soldiers were. Elizabeth rushes over and finds the badly wounded colonel in a tent. He had been shot in the chest and was dying, but he asks Elizabeth to read him a poem. Stranger, now on this earth shall we meet. Though I have surely lived with you, dreamed of you. The colonel leaves the world with Elizabeth by his side. Meanwhile, Scott wakes up from his dream and feels a sense of fear. Later, he receives a letter from Elizabeth and learns that the colonel has died. He is saddened by the fact that the post office has burned down and he can no longer send letters. He realizes for the first time that he is in love with Elizabeth. On the other side, Elizabeth finds the letter that had slipped to the floor and sees Scott's picture. She was shocked because Scott looks exactly like the colonel. It turns out that they were destined to fall in love a long time ago. Scott couldn't send the letter, so he went to Elizabeth's home 100 years later. But he found that the owner of the house had died and left the house to the maid. He went to the room where Elizabeth used to live. Suddenly he was drawn to the dressing table and slowly walked over to it. At the same time Elizabeth, who was combing her hair, stopped. She could feel Scott's breath. Scott put his hand in the air and placed it right on Elizabeth's shoulder. Elizabeth closes her eyes and enjoys the rush. Scott smiled back. The maid interrupts this intertemporal communication and brings him a box. This is Elizabeth's belongings. Scott looks through it and finds that Elizabeth was a teacher and never married. He also found the letters he had written to her and the photos he had sent her. That's you! How'd you get in there? Scott said that even if he explained the maid would not believe it. Finally Scott went to pay his respects to Elizabeth. Elizabeth's tombstone was engraved with the words, I never forget you. Scott knew the words were written for him. Suddenly a dog pounces on Scott. A girl ran out of the house next to him to call the dog back. When she looked up, Scott was stunned. I must really like you. You guys usually jump on people. This girl looked exactly like Elizabeth. As she was leaving, Scott caught up with her because he knew this was the one he was looking for. The two of them had faced the harsh reality of fate and the separation of their worlds. But they still traveled back in time to share love and life. So now they both live in the same time and space and will surely live a happy life.